the honor, and the praise. Psalms 100 says to make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with what? With singing. Don't you know that the Lord, he is God? It is he that has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Into into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. You know why? Because the Lord is good. And his mercy is everlasting. And uh, his truth endures to all generations. Praise ye the Lord. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, we say thank you, God. Thank you because you have made us to understand that you are God. The true and the living God. For you have blessed us to call us out of darkness into your marvelous light. Great God Almighty, and have made known unto us uh, that you are the source of all of our blessings. Uh, that you loved us so much that you made us after your own image and likeness. Uh, you loved us so much that you gave us your very best in Christ Jesus. Uh, that came into this world and became one of us. Uh, Great God Almighty, thank you for waking us this morning, uh, clothing us in our right minds, uh, and bidding us to come into the house of worship one more time. Thank you for the privilege of fellowshipping with you and with my brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus. Thank you, God, uh, that you have blessed us with a reasonable portion of health and strength in our bodies. And now, God, we pray uh, for your presence to be made known uh, that you would take control of this service and fill up every heart and mind that the words that come out of our mouth might proceed from you to give glory and honor to your name uh, that we might not be ashamed uh, to praise your name uh, but everything in us uh, might glorify you. Uh, use us to do your bidding. We thank you right now, God, for we know your presence is among us. Help us to do your perfect will. This we ask and we pray in the mighty name of Jesus, our Lord, our Savior, and our soon coming King. Amen. Amen. We have a moment here. All right. Our opening hymn will be found in your bulletins. It is entitled, We Will Understand It Better by and by. We will, now we don't understand everything. We're not going to understand everything. But as we travel this journey, we will understand it better by and by. If you know the Lord, <laughs> you begin to understand that God will continue to bless us with knowledge and understanding in doing it bidding. He sustains us at all times and keeps us inside of his will. Let us lift up our voices like we mean it. I was speaking the other day and I said it's not good to sing unto God and don't know what you're saying. But the Bible says we need to praise him and worship him in spirit and in truth. Amen. And if you don't know what you're saying, now you know you're telling the truth. You need to understand what we're saying. Let's listen to the words as we lift our voice and it says, and I'm not a great singer, y'all. We are all there tossed in the river.
It is entitled, God the Omnipotent. Amen. God the All-Powerful. Yes. God the Almighty. Yes, yes. Jesus said that all power in heaven and earth is in his hands. We serve an awesome God. In fact, he is so awesome, we don't know how awesome he actually is because we don't know everything about God. And my judgment is he's greater than great. Yeah. He's better than good. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. That's right. And our finite understanding, we just cannot comprehend the greatness of God and the magnitude of his love for us. God the omnipotent. I will be reading the light print. We will ask you to respond with the dark print. In this house of worship, we do not insist on folk standing. But if you uh, feel compelled, so you may stand as we uh, recite uh, from our response to reading. When you are ready, please give me your hearty amen. Amen. It reads like this. To whom then will ye liken God? Or what likeness will ye compare unto him? Have you not known? Have you not heard? Have you not been told you from the beginning? Have you not understood from the foundations of the earth? It is he that sitteth upon the circle of the earth, and the inhabitants thereof are as grasshoppers, that stretches out the heavens as a curtain, and spreadeth them out as a first tent to dwell in. That bringeth the princesses of nothing. Yeah. Yea, they shall not be planted. Yea, they shall not be sown. Yea, their stock shall not take root in the earth. And he shall also blow upon them, and they shall wither. And the whirlwind shall take them away as stubble.
Just live.
sustaining power of God. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Y'all can hear my loud mouth. I'm not going to loud mouth. My wife knows it. I know that. I love loud voice. <laughs> but it is a good thing to know God for yourself because He will sustain us in whatever Amen. we go through in the storm of this life. Yeah. I've even experienced joy going through storms and I didn't understand it at first. Mm -hmm. And then something spoke to me and said, because God wouldn't let it happen. Yeah. He wasn't going to let me sit in the corner with my thumb in my mouth popping. Okay. He yeah. actually made me joyful yeah. in the midst of that storm. So I know what you're talking about. You grow up to understand these things about God. Okay? He's always with us. He always keeps his word. Yes. I'm glad to see uh, Sister Jessica. It's a miracle that she's here. The pain is going Amen. That's another testimony to God's goodness. Amen. 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 At this time, we're going to recognize our visitors. Amen. Amen. And if you would so like to, we ask that you would rise to your feet and make yourself known. Amen. Because we are so glad to see you come by to visit and worship with us.
the mighty God we serve. Yes. Yeah. Even the angels bow down before him. Yeah. Yeah. Heaven and earth adore him. We give God a hand praise. praise.
things come up to thee, and of thine own have we given unto thee. Gave others gave more that they didn't need, 
she gave everything she had. She gave more than all the others because she gave without thinking about it. She just gave. She gave her last day. God doesn't want us to show off when we do things for him, when we teach for him, when we preach for him, when we just smile. Amen. He just wants us to do it out of the genuine love of our heart. Amen. So if there's anything that you can get from this, do all things, not just through Jesus Christ, but with love for Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us pray out. Heavenly Father, my Savior, let these children know your love and be able to act on your love, to be a part of your love, God, because your love is the source of all things. God, for you love the world so much that you gave the only begotten Son. But for these children, let them know what that means. Let them know who you are. And don't let it just stop on them. Let it keep going on for us. Because as we teach them, we are reminded that it is your love that started it all. We ask this in your son's name, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Say. 
age, the young mom. Let's just pray for each other. Revive in them, God. And God, those that 
that are in government. Help them, because you are yet wiser, yet better. On this God, help them, because they are no more and no less human than we are, and we yes. know we're fallen. We know we're imperfect, God. And for my sisters on my left, my brothers on my left, left, my sisters and my brothers on the right, God, hear their prayer. Touch each one and understand, let them understand. Let them be confirmed that you're working. Let them understand that you're working even still now, God. That if they're at, the prayers will have an answer. Because even in your scriptures it says that there's a yes and a no and a wait. So let us wait, God, for your answer. Yes. If it's going to be a yes, we say thank you, God. If it is a no, say thank you, God. And if you say just wait a little while longer, help us to be patient, God. Help us in our faith to be patient, to listen, and quiet to hear you, God. Yes. God, I know there is a lot of prayer requests this morning. And I don't want to recite them incorrectly, God. But you know exactly what each one of us have in our hearts for these people. Yes. Nothing but love. And you know even better those people, those loved ones, the yes. situation, God. So as we call out to you, because we see externally what they're hurting, yes. but you know internally what they're hurting, God. And you know what's best for them, God. We, so we ask you, not in our will, in our want, in our way, yes. but in yours, God, that you would help them. Help them because you are better at it. So we ask you, God, of all these things, through your son's name, Jesus Christ, that you touch them and that you help them, every single one of them. We ask this through your son's name, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 And amen. 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 Thank you so much. Thank you. At this time, we're going to ask Brother Bill, if he would honor us in doing what I believe that he is not only the most capable of, but the most qualified of us, and that is to introduce this great preacher that we have in our midst. Amen. Amen. He's going to bring us the word of the Lord. Amen. Church, give God a hand, praise Amen. Amen. You know, um, talking about us about Jesus, Amen. 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 So I have the honor and the, uh, the privilege and the pleasure and to introduce uh, my wife, my prayer partner, my friend, my uh, my, my everything. You know, uh, she's a woman of God. She loves God to death. She, she, um, she is uh, just, just, she, she just glorifies God. Amen. 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 She walks in the authority that God has for her. Yeah. That's what I love about her. Uh, she walks. She, she just walks in confidence. Mm -hmm. She walks in. She knows what she wants. She knows what who she is. And um, she does a wonderful job in even teaching our, our kids Amen. to know who they are and to know that they are a child of God yeah, and yeah. to represent the kingdom. Amen. 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 Um, she is, we are co-partner in our uh, in a marriage ministry that we have after I do marriage ministry. Um, you know, so I'm grateful. I mean, who, who can wake up every day and say that they get to worship and get to uh, uh, fellowship and get to, you know, uh, you, you know, do, do, do great things with their wives and with their husbands, amen? amen. So I have the honor and the, and the privilege to um, have a, a ministry uh, with my wife. So I'm grateful for that. I'm grateful for her. I love her to death. And y'all gonna get a word, a strong word, a word not that she came up with. It ain't nothing that she said. I'm gonna break down, this is what I'm gonna say. A word that God gave to her, amen? amen. So amen. those that you don't know, and we know, we, we family here, amen? Amen. amen. So y'all know my wife, y'all know me, amen, amen. amen. But 
but for those who don't know her, I want to introduce my wife, Reverend April Bell. Amen.
2 Samuel chapter 12, verses 1 through 9, and then skip down to 13. And it reads, So the Lord sent Nathan the prophet to tell David this story. There were two men in a certain town. One was rich and one was poor. The rich man owned a great many sheep and cattle. The poor man owned nothing but one little lamb he had bought. He raised that little lamb and it grew up with his children. It ate from the man's own plate and drank from his cup. He cuddled it in his arms like a baby daughter. One day a guest arrived at the home of the rich man, but instead of killing an animal from his own flock or herd, he took the poor man's lamb and killed it and prepared it for his guest. Yeah. David was furious. As surely as the Lord lives, he vowed, any man who would do such a thing deserves to die. He must repay four lambs to the poor man for the one he stole and for having no pity. Then Nathan said to David, you are that man. The Lord, the God of Israel says, I anointed you king of Israel and saved you from the power of Saul. I gave you your master's house and his wives and the kingdoms of Israel and Judah. And if that had not been enough, my God, I would have given you much, much more. Why then have you despised the word of the Lord and done this horrible deed? For you have murdered Uriah the Hittite with the sword of the Ammonites and stolen his wife. Let's get down to verse 13. Then David confessed to Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. Nathan replied, yes, but the Lord has forgiven you, and you won't die for this sin. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. If you would allow me a few moments to stand before you today, I'd like to use as my subject, it's me. It's me. As we look at our text today, the background to the story is rather familiar. Most of us know the story of David and Bathsheba. David was king of Israel and was at the height of his rule. Everything was going great. The people loved him and everything was good. And he had the favor of God. And then one day he saw a beautiful woman by the name of Bathsheba as she was bathing on her rooftop. David was so infatuated with her that he sent his men to get her. And when she came to the palace, he slept with her even though she was a married woman. She was married to a man by the name of Uriah, and he was a soldier in David's army. So shortly after that, Bathsheba found out that she was pregnant with David's child. And so in order to try to hide what he had done, David called Uriah home from battle and tried everything he could to make Uriah sleep with Bathsheba so everyone would think that he was the father and not David. Sounds like that. Well, David's plan didn't work. So as his last option, David sent Uriah back into battle and had the commander of the army put him in the front lines where the fighting would be the heaviest so Uriah would surely die. So David tried to cover up one sin by committing another sin. But how many of you know that we can't hide anything from God? He's omniscient. He sees everything and he knows everything. So by deliberately sinning in an effort to cover something up that we already did, we're really only making things worse because we're seeing what you did the first time. Who loves somebody? Well, this plan of David's did work and Uriah died in battle. So then David sent for Bathsheba and she became his wife. So a year had passed since all of this had happened, and no doubt the guilt and the shame that David had once felt was all but gone at this point. Yeah, okay. See, the longer we continue in our sin, the more it becomes comfortable to us. Yeah, yeah we're, we're no longer sensitive to the fact that we're disobeying God because we've done it for so long that we don't even look at it as sin anymore. Right, right, right. It has become such a part of our lives that now we don't even think twice about it. I, I, I used to feel bad about doing it, but now I, not so much. I, it used to make me feel a little bit uncomfortable, but now I'm fine with it. Church, we must be careful not to let the very thing that we're doing wrong begin to feel right. Amen. See, David had gotten to the point in his life where he had forgotten all about how Bathsheba even became his wife in the first place. 
Listen, just because we have slapped some makeup and a dress on don't make it okay. Just because we put on a suit and tie doesn't make it all right. Sin is sin. But then, here comes Nathan. And let me just tell you all, we all need a Nathan in our lives. If you don't have a Nathan in your life, I suggest you go out and find one as soon as possible. Because every so often, we need someone to come alongside us and whisper in our ear and tell us about ourselves. Sometimes we need someone to come and nudge us on the shoulder and say, you know you ain't supposed to be doing that. Because deep down inside, we know it's wrong, but it's been there for so long that the guilt of it has been buried. And now we need someone to come along and help us dig it up. And Nathan was that guy to David. Nathan was a prophet, a true prophet. And I say a true prophet because what he had to say wasn't always good news for the one receiving the message. See, back in the day, prophets weren't popular people. People didn't chase after prophecy like they do today. Oh, now we have prophecy services and we bring the prophet in and everybody gets a good word. But that's not how it was back in the day. Back in the day, old time prophets didn't always tell you the stuff you wanted to hear. Prophets like Jonah who told the people of Nineveh that the city would be destroyed in 40 days. Prophets like Jeremiah who warned Israel that they would soon be in exile. Prophets like Isaiah who told he, uh, Isaiah who told Hezekiah, get your house in order because you will surely die. Uh -uh. See, real prophets tell you what thus saith the Lord, whether it be good or bad, whether it makes you shout or cry, they're going to tell you what God told them. But now, that's not how the church operates today, Pastor Zachary. Now we want the stuff that's going to make us feel good. <laughs> we want to leave church and say that was a good service because we want the stuff that tickles our ears that are piercing our hearts. We want the stuff that makes us run around the church and not the stuff that like, makes us prostrate before the Lord. Everybody wants to shout amen on Sunday, but don't nobody want to say ouch. But can I tell you that sometimes our lives require an ouch? Because truth be told, everything on this Christian journey won't always be a walk in the park. It's not always sunshine and blue skies. Can I have a witness? Everything don't always go the way that I want it to. There will be trials. There will be storms. Everyone's not going to have a mansion. Everyone's not going to drive a Lamborghini. Everyone's not going to have a house on a hill. That's just not reality. So we need people and preachers and prophets in our lives who will not just say the things we want to hear, but the things we need to hear.
because it was easier for him to get rid of the problem than deal with the truth of what he had done. I remember we had got a uh, stain on the carpet a few years back. I can't even remember what it was. But instead of getting down on my hands and knees and scrubbing it or paying the money to go out and get a new carpet, I just threw the area rug right over it. Why? Because it was easier to cover it up than to deal with what was really going on. So yes, the truth hurts. But John 8, 32 tells us that the truth shall set you free. There's a freedom that comes with saying, it's me. It's me. It's me, oh Lord. Not my brother. Not my sister. But it's me, 
man in the story, David does, does what God wants us all to do. He confesses. He confesses. He said in verse 13, I have sinned against the Lord. There it is right there. My job. Right there. He said, I have sinned against the Lord. There are some things that will only come to you when you get real with yourself. Some revelations and some of those hidden truths will only be, thank you, son, for clapping for me. Look at the little boy. He listening to his cat. So, <laughs>
few more times after that. But thanks be to God, we, we serve a God that desires it's me. He desires your confession. He wants you to confess to him. Because when once you confess, he says, yeah, let me go to work. Now I got somebody I can use. Now I got a vessel that I can pour into. That's when he gets out his shaping tool and becomes the potter. And he starts shaping us and molding us. And turning us into what he intended us to be. Yeah. That means some stuff got to be taken out. And some stuff got to be added. And it don't always feel good. And it ain't always a pretty sight. But if you can just hang on in there while the potter does his work. If you can just hold on while God does his thing. I promise the finished product will be a work of art that you never can imagine. How do you know that? Sunshine and blue sky. That is not the truth. 
He said, pick up your cross and follow me. What's that mean? What was the cross represent? That means there's going to be some hard times. I don't care if you're a Christian. You're just going to be some hard times. We suffer with him, but we rise with him. Amen? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when I invite you to come and, and, to, and partake in this Christian journey, I am not inviting you to come to a perfect um, life. That's not truth. I wouldn't be standing up here telling you the truth. But I am inviting you to serve a perfect God. Amen. I'm not telling you that there won't be storms, but I'm telling you he gives you an umbrella. Amen. I'm not telling you that it won't be crazy and there won't be stuff that going to happen, but I'll tell you that you're going to make it through. Amen. Because God will never leave you nor forsake you. But you've got to ask him to come in yes, and see right. your life. Amen. He can't do it unless you say it's me. Amen. He won't do it unless you confess and, and ask him to come in and change. Sometimes you got to move stuff. You ever re rearrange your house? Yeah. yeah. Sometimes you got to move stuff around, right? That's what it is. Inviting Christ into your life to come and move stuff around. Sometimes you got to take stuff out. Here's my decorator, right? Sometimes you got to take stuff out. It don't go right. This this right here don't go with what this right here, what I'm trying to do. What God is trying to do in your life, the things that you used to do, don't go there no more. But you got to get it out so you can redecorate it. Is there one that needs to make Jesus my choice? I know y'all know this one. I decided to make Jesus my choice. I thank you for that. <laughs> Amen. Is there one? I know people are watching the Facebook land. I say this all the time. We've been on, on in this COVID. I've been saying to people that are watching on live, you don't got to be here to accept Jesus into your life. Nope, you don't. You can be in your car. You can be in your living room, your bedroom, no matter where you're at. All you got to do is confess with your mouth. That Jesus is Lord. And believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. And what does it say, church? You shall be saved. That's it. Ain't no word that tell you to come up the aisle. Give your, you know, we say, give your hand, give your heart to the Lord, and your hand to the pastor. You should, now, don't get me wrong. You need to be connected with the church. But most importantly, you need to be connected with him. So is there one? We all saved up in here today. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. 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 God bless you. Amen. 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 We've heard from the Lord today. And we have been abundantly blessed by this message. I know I have. Amen. And it is not possible for us to pay God, because everything belongs to Him. But He has lent us our resources. And some of those resources to take care of His folks. Amen? Amen. The Bible tells us specifically we are to remunerate those who preach the Word of God and treads out the corn. Amen? Amen? So we're going to ask those of you that are willing and ready. To please stand at the time we want to lift up an offering for this great preacher and some measure to show our appreciation for allowing God to bless us with his word. Amen? Amen. Amen. The officers are going to come now and tell you what they need you to do. And let's be generous in our giving. The Lord loveth a cheerful giver. Amen. Amen. Will you stand? And we're going to do just like we did in the general office. We're going to start at my left, uh, my right, your left, and come before the Lord with our gifts. Amen. Amen. All right. Amen. One of you songbird listen to the song. Amen.
us from falling and present us faultless before the throne of God. 